Alright, today we're moving on with our mini Godzilla movies. Today we have a cult favorite, Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla. I gotta say, a lot of conflict. Often through recent years, I've referred to this as a bridge movie, due to the fact that it's between two larger Godzilla movies. But on the other hand, I pop this movie in, and suddenly, I'm sent down Nostalgia Road, 22 years back in time, and suddenly the memories just hit me of how innocent things were a long time ago. Oh, how that nostalgia just hits. Which makes it hard to go rough on a Godzilla movie that provided so much happiness. For you see, while this was not my first Heisa era Godzilla movie I ever saw, it was the first one that I ever had the privilege to own on VHS. Overall though, it was my second Godzilla film, only second to Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster as I talked about much earlier in my review series. This movie, it got a ton of replay value from me, and I find it to be intriguing for multiple reasons honestly when I look back at it. This was the movie that further evolved Mickey's character, and it does a wonderful job doing such. And I do think in a way, this movie does oversaturate the amount of, well, Godzilla, due to the fact that we just saw Godzilla face a mecha counterpart. But now, we have Space Godzilla, which is essentially just a reskinned Super Godzilla. But can you really hate this idea, really? Like, I'm sorry, but this idea is entirely badass. I mean, basically Super Godzilla with crystals, and then for that, on the shoulders, basically it looks like giant bomb pops. I'm glad to know this didn't go to waste. And it gets even more interesting knowing that the original idea was to have Mecha Godzilla in the film. Originally, he was pitched in, and yeah, I'll be honest, I wanted to mind that. And sure, yes, it would have oversaturated the amount of Godzilla that's already in the movie, considering the fact we'd have Godzilla, Little Godzilla, Space Godzilla, Mecha Godzilla, but there's no way I could sit around and criticize this. But in place of Mecha Godzilla, we get Mogira. In Mogira, I will say it's a really awesome weapon itself with all its different weapons that it has, but I can't say it's as badass as a Mecha Godzilla because honestly, he feels like he's here just to take the beating and to kind of be the weaker link in the storyline of this movie. And Mogira is supposed to be the weapon that's hailed to be the weapon that will destroy Godzilla. But let's be honest, I don't think this would have happened. I mean, Godzilla would have torn through Mogira had they faced each other one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, they did face off once in the movie, kinda, but Godzilla was kinda blindsided and we didn't get to see a real actual battle between Mogira and Godzilla. But this is due to the fact that Space Godzilla appears and wedges himself into this hypothetical battle and becomes a bigger threat. Regardless, I've always applauded the way they introduced Mogira. I mean, Mogira was not even originally in a Godzilla movie before. However though, Mogira was property of Toho and did appear in the 1957 film The Mysterians. So it was pretty clever of Toho to look into their expansive universe in the Showa era and find one of those mechs that probably wasn't as relevant as, say, Mecha Godzilla, but one they could take from an era before, bring it into the Heisa era, and make it more relevant and a key component to this story. So let's set the record straight. So we have Mecha King Adora, which came from the future, brought from the 23rd century, reverse engineered to create Mecha Godzilla 2, and now we have Mogira, constructed from leftover pieces of Mecha Godzilla 2. Nextly, in a sense, I do like to say this film, while it does go ahead and borrow other elements from the previous films, like similar sets, sound effects, and of course reoccurring characters, it does feel very different in a sense though. And it also revives other themes that hadn't been seen in a while, such as romance plays a big, big role in this one and feels way more present in this film. Attached to all that, you also have vengeance. For that, you see, we meet Yuki, who's dead set on killing Godzilla himself, for killing Goro Gondo, a close friend of his during the ANAB attacks on Godzilla in 1989 during the events of Godzilla vs. Biolante. This is a nice callback in addition to a story that links and helps connect the Heisa era films together further. Yuki wants revenge on Godzilla, but Godzilla needs vengeance himself upon Space Godzilla for holding little Godzilla captive. If all this isn't enough, the soundtrack for this movie is extremely different. Overall, I've seen some mixed opinions on this soundtrack, but I for one really like it. In turn, and change compared to the other ones, this one is kind of nice, and I also find it to be beautiful in a sense. I mean, it really fits the tone of everything we got going in this film, with the romance. At certain times, it feels very ambient, 
other times, it is very threatening and heroic. I gotta say, one of my favorite bits in this movie has gotta be the bit where Mogira is getting ready to take off and have the music playing. And, let's not also forget the part where Godzilla is marching on the land, getting ready to do battle with Space Godzilla. Like, really seeing this scene, it feels personal, and the music just adds on. No offense to the people that Godzilla tramples or die from the falling rubble, but Godzilla is dead set on decking the one that captured his son. And a little Godzilla's theme? I don't know about you, but this just gives me Legend Zelda Wind Waker vibes overall, like it reminds me of Outset Island. Whoa! But the thing is, this movie came out like nine years before that game even came out. Alright, let's dissect the film, shall we? The movie kicks off, and well, it's made known from the start that the Mystique Space Monster is out with a premeditated, evil plan. A reminder that Space Godzilla is just pure evil with malicious intent. This just really makes Space Godzilla an extremely different kaiju from any of them we've really seen before, due to the fact it's acting under its own will as an alien from space. The only other one I can think of is Hedera. But the difference between Hedera and Space Godzilla is Hedera was just consuming. It didn't seem to have any knowledge of Godzilla beforehand until they actually met. Space Godzilla seems to have knowledge of Godzilla already before he even shows up and knows that he has to kill Godzilla. This is due to the fact that humans can't defend themselves if Godzilla is dead. Logically speaking, I guess if Godzilla was killed, they could use the Mogira, but the Mogira is clearly going to be outpowered, obviously, and they could go ahead and build another Mecha Godzilla, but all their plans and all their knowledge is geared towards fighting Godzilla. You can't exactly execute the same attack plan against Space Godzilla when he's entirely different. Sure, maybe he looks similar, but the attacks that Space Godzilla has is just completely different, and there's a lot of new tricks up his sleeves that Godzilla can't possibly do that the humans can't prep for. Everything about Space Godzilla is easily implied by the cosmos as they make the return, warning Mickey that danger is on the horizon and that they must do something and Godzilla cannot be killed. So if you're curious to how Space Godzilla was created, we're going to go and talk about this. And this movie gives you not one, but two pitch theories of Space Godzilla's creation, but it never gives you a concrete creation at all. This is one of the few movies that gives you an origin but nothing that's concrete that's written in stone of how this creature came to be about. Number one, that Mothra carried G-cells in space that were cast into a black hole and emerged from a white hole. Two, that the possibility is that Bioante may be indirectly responsible for the creation of Space Godzilla upon leaving Earth. Personally, I prefer the Mothra theory, and due to the fact that Cosmos really seem to have first-hand knowledge of what created the space monster. It seems more plausible that they realize that they may have indirectly created something that they weren't aware of that could have possibly been created when Mothra went into space. But, there is an interesting fan theory revolving around Bioante. It's not official, but I feel like we can have some fun with this though, and we're going to bring it up. Where this theory goes is that Space Godzilla may be Bioante's new form. Erika's spirit is now gone. And what's also considered a relation between Godzilla and Bioante, and the fact that they've obviously met before. Both have tusks, and leave in a similar fashion. It's a great theory, but I prefer the Mothra one. Next way this movie provides some duality between Project T, which is aimed at controlling Godzilla with psychic controls from Mickey, versus using Mogira to destroy Godzilla. So we have a conflict in this movie. And I gotta say, the support for Godzilla has came a long way in the 10 years of this movie's timeline. I mean, he first appeared and obviously he was strictly the villain, and he stayed the villain, then after that more to an anti-hero, but this movie is probably the closest that we will see Godzilla approached as a hero in this entire era. While all this dilemma and dual plans are attempted to be enforced, Space Godzilla heads towards Earth seeking out Little Godzilla, who's done quite a bit growing since the last time we've seen him. And this is officially the cutest incarnation of a baby Godzilla. I won't hear you out about Minya. I'm sorry. From the moment Space Godzilla shows up, I love how the dreadful music kicks in. And then it's pure ambience. You know this is a threat. Danger has arrived, outpowering Godzilla and kidnapping little Godzilla. This is now personal for Godzilla and Space Godzilla now has Godzilla's full attention. 
I also should say that I love the characters in this film. Of all the Heisa era Godzilla films, I find the cast here entirely likable. Yuki, Koji, Kiyoshi. Sometimes in hindsight, I wish this trio had remained, maintained consistent into the next film. And possibly one of the reasons the characters in this movie are actually likable and memorable is you spend a lot of time in the first act of this film getting to know them on an island. Then later, all three become pilots of the Mogira. Doing battle with Space Godzilla, working with Godzilla despite the fact that Yuki just flat out hates Godzilla, and then gets him off course at one point. I mean, you're really cheering for this team of guys. You really are. And let's be honest, as cool as Space Godzilla is, he's an asshole. Another thing that I gotta talk about is, overall, this plot is kinda hollow, I will be honest. But, if you want kaiju battling, the final 40 minutes are practically just dedicated towards kaiju on the screen whether it's Godzilla and Space Godzilla basically terrorizing the city, and of course after that you have the Mogira versus Space Godzilla battle. Furthermore, you have Godzilla versus Space Godzilla, and then after that you have a two-on-one battle. And the aspect I love about this the most is despite the fact that he has outnumbered Space Godzilla, victory does not arrive easily, because Godzilla and Mogira get their asses whipped in this battle. They really do. And the way it's overall done is it makes Space Godzilla feel like a final boss in a video game before you're alerted that something stronger is arriving soon. And of course, in the Godzilla series, something stronger, at least in my opinion, is about ready to arrive. It's really hard to trash this movie. Sure, sometimes the plot is not nearly as complex or heavy as, say, the last few movies, and I really won't go ahead and deny the faults of this movie such as scenes switching from day into night in succession with no implication that time has passed, but you can have endless fun watching this film, and it must be added to your Godzilla watch list. Allow me to be perfectly clear. Honest David says this is a weaker Godzilla film, but then there's that side of me that says, this Godzilla movie, it isn't bad. Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla is a must watch. I really don't care if it's a little weaker than Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2. It's at least better than Godzilla vs. Mothra. That wraps up my take on Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla. I thoroughly enjoy the fact that you guys are enjoying me and liking these videos. You guys have sent me a lot of positivity. This is coming straight from the heart. And you guys also, I do want to say, made 2022 special. Everybody, whether it's on Instagram or YouTube. Up next, we have Godzilla vs. Destroyer. The end of the Heisa era. The death of Godzilla, if you will. Thank you for joining me.